internal rotation. Again, this is for the internal portion of the rotator cuff muscle. And I'm going to simply get myself aligned by bringing my elbow to my hip. I'm going to take my non-throwing arm and stick it right here under my armpit. This will help me get a little bit better of a pivot. I'm just going to simply pull across parallel to the ground from one hip to the other. Now one of the most important things you can do when you get to these single arm exercises is to make sure you keep your hand and your arm very loose and relaxed. You don't want to make a tight fist because that creates tension. So again, I'm going to loosen up my hand, relax my arm, and simply pull straight across. This is another benefit of having a wrist cuff as opposed to pulling a baseball or a handle. Again, the moment you feel the muscles begin to fatigue, instead of trying to use the body to help out, simply move closer to the fence, take some slack out of the tubing, and again, you'll notice that the arm will do the work as opposed to the body, which of course is the purpose of these exercises. Okay, for exercise number six, we're going to do external rotation, which is for the external rotator cuff muscles. Very similar to exercise number five, except again, we're going to go in the reverse direction. So as I set up here, I'm going to put my right elbow on my right hip, my non-throwing hand, my left hand, I'm going to bring to my right elbow and to hold it in place. I'm going to keep my arm at waistline and simply come straight across, parallel to the ground, only to 90 degrees. And again, make sure I have proper technique long, loose breathing patterns. Okay, for exercises seven and eight, we're gonna take the silver clip from hip height and I'm gonna move it up to shoulder height. The reason we wanna do this is even though we're still working the rotator cuff muscle group, we wanna change the height to change the angle of the rotator cuff exercise. What I'm gonna do is simply come out again with feet stride distance apart and I'm going to bring my elbow this time up to shoulder height and perpendicular to my shoulder, so straight across. I'm going to use my opposite hand here for support to make sure the elbow doesn't slide back. I want to make sure that my arm here is lined up with the tubing, so I'm not pulling toward my ear, but simply straight across. Again, make sure I have enough lag in the tubing to pull forward. So if you feel like you can, Make a simple adjustment to move out, feel free to, as long as the technique doesn't break down. All I'm doing now is just pulling straight across the tubing or with the tubing, and again, my arm is in proper alignment. Again, I'm shooting for 20 to 25 repetitions, and I can feel my arm starting to fatigue, so rather than my mechanics break down, and my elbow slide back and use my body, I'm simply going to walk back toward the fence. I'll take a little lag out of the tubing again, elbow again perpendicular and then straight down. Okay, for exercise number eight, we're going to do elevated external rotation, which again is working the back of the shoulder or the external rotator cuff muscles. I want to line myself up just as I did with the external rotation down at hip height, only this time I'm going to bring my elbow to shoulder height. I'm going to use my non-throwing hand again here for support to keep the elbow stable. And it's nothing more than coming straight up, only this time I'm going to pull a little bit further than 90 degrees to 120 degrees. Again, technique is very important. Keeping long, loose breathing patterns is important. And the key is, is to not let the elbow slide past the shoulder. So again, my elbow is perpendicular to the shoulder at shoulder height. Okay, at this point I'm going to take the silver clip and just move it down here to shin height for exercises 9 and 10. Exercise 9 is reverse throwing. It's very similar to forward throwing, except of course you're going in reverse action. Again here the emphasis is on the external rotator cuff muscles. Now whenever I work with players, the one thing I always tell them is that, that this is the most valuable exercise you're going to do to keep your arm healthy and strong because it's the single most important exercise for isolating the external rotator cuff muscles. So again, what I'm going to do is simply get here in the hip drill stance for good body alignment and to make sure my front side or my front shoulder stays in. And all I'm going to simply do is go through my arm slot again in the reverse motion.
Now while I'm doing my reverse throwing exercises, you'll notice there's three other major points I'm going to pay attention to. Number one is my front shoulder. The one thing you don't want to happen is let the front shoulder leak or fly open. What this does is help support the arm and take away from the exercise itself. In other words, by keeping my front shoulder turned into the silver clip on the fence, it's going to isolate the shoulder and make the shoulder do the work, not the body. My second major point is to make sure that when I come through my arm slot that my arm is loose and relaxed just in the same manner when I throw forward. I want to make sure my elbow is soft and loose, my shoulder is relaxed, and at the same time the arm slot I'm coming through isn't too high. So in this case, for me, I like to come through about a, what I consider to be a 130 arm slot. And finally, again, to make sure your breathing is long and loose and your face is relaxed. At any point, if you feel fatigue, just simply come a little closer to the fence, get a little bit lag, and finish your exercise strong with that front side in. As if those first nine exercises weren't enough to get your arm loose and ready to throw, we have one last exercise, forward throwing. And the purpose of forward throwing is to not only get the arm to stretch in the way you're going to throw anyway, but to also give it a chance to practice getting good extension through resistance. So what I'm going to do is simply take the wrist cuff off my arm, and we'll put it right back together. I'll put my fingers right through there just like I'm holding a baseball. Make sure my body gets lined up just like I'm doing the hip drill because I am theoretically still throwing. Back foot square, front foot open to 60 degrees. Again, stride distance apart. And here we go. My hands will be together. As I break my hands and load, I'll get good extension, come through my arm slot, and make sure I work downhill with my chin up. Now this is where I'm going to feel the extension. As I work downhill with my chin up, and by keeping my chest up and my chin up, it provides me for the right arm slot, the right support for my lower half. And again, I'm simply going to work downhill over that front knee. Hands together, I break my hands, I make sure I get right here through my arm slot where I need to be, get out over that front knee and get good extension. Okay, as a last reminder, be sure to keep your eyes level to the ground at all times. Keep the chest up and the chin up. Give the arm a chance to extend out in front. The only way that's possible is if you keep your body relaxed. The saying that I tell all players I work with is work on keeping your body and mind relaxed and let your arm be aggressive out in front. So let's try that. Now there are seven checkpoints that you need to pay attention to when doing these exercises. Number one. The quality of the technique is more important than the quantity of the repetitions. Number two, allow the arm to do the work rather than the body. Number three, keep the arm, body, and mind relaxed. Number four, keep long, fluid breathing patterns. Number five, walk closer to the fence to reduce tension, maximize endurance, and maintain correct technique. Number six, walk away from the fence to increase the resistance. And finally, number seven, Work to the point of fatigue rather than to the point of failure. Okay, guys.